Hello and welcome back to Misrepresented. I'm your host, Lisa Opie, and today I am so excited because I have an amazing entrepreneur and businesswoman, Shauna Norton, the founder of Live Dolce Vida. Welcome, Shauna. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. It's of such course. an honor to be here. I'm so excited I met you at the Influencer Awards. I know, I know. Yeah, so how did you end up there? Um, actually, I found out about it, I think, through social media, and I decided that I wanted to sponsor, be a part of it, oh, wow. um, because you guys have such an amazing audience. Yeah. <laughs> and then I reached out to the person that was organizing, and then quickly everything um, became reality. And it wow. was it was kind of an overwhelming experience when you kind of saw how many followers you guys had and how big of a platform you really had. and. I think the most impressive thing was meeting the influencers and everybody being so kind, so warm, yeah. especially with you. I oh mean, my gosh. I mean, I loved everybody. I walked into the room and I was kind of intimidated because I'm like, oh my gosh, like I know these people. Like, right. you know, that's like Noel Dahl, like, oh my gosh. So it was really intimidating. But then, like you said, you meet everybody, yeah. like Jen Salter. They're just so sweet and so yeah. warm. I so. did not expect that. That was a big surprise. But you should not have been intimidated because by <laughs> far you were the best dressed. Oh, <laughs> like, thank absolutely. You. Thank from head you. to toe makeup hair you didn't leave anything <laughs> thank you apparently the dress code was like a gold dress i did not get oh, that memo because i came in like hot pink and i did not know i, I did not know that either <laughs> okay good so we're safe i mean nobody was mad about it so right. they let me in um so i want to talk about you so tell me about your upbringing like i noticed your accent you're from jamaica yes my accent that's so strained I now it, it sounds a little british it sounds all over the place it does i love it <laughs> <laughs> thank you i am actually i was born in kingston jamaica mm -hmm. and um i guess a little bit of the accent will come out now and i grew up there until about 15 16. Okay. and then i moved to the u.s by myself for university. By yourself? By oh myself. My at 16? At 16. Wow. Actually, I finished high school at 15. So 15, 16. And when I think about that, I'm like, how did my mother do that? Uh, how did you do that? <laughs> was there like a culture shock? Like, was it really different? No. You know, at that age, you, you're you fearless. You don't yeah. think about anything. You yeah. think you're indispensable. So there was a lot of courage there. And I think it suited well with who I was, even as a, a, a young child i was always very determined i always thought very big i never had limitations on what i wanted to do where i wanted to go so it was just like oh another thing wow. um yeah pretty impressive when i look back at it at the yeah. time it just felt like normal so you went to fiu right did you study political science is that yes. right i did too i'm a political <laughs> science major I know, yeah. I know. and then you went on to get your mba yes so yeah. actually and I know that you did your political science major, but just mm -hmm. like me, we didn't do anything with it, right? It's hard to do something with that one. <laughs> Correct. Right? I call it like an MRS degree because it's like one that you get to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did mine because I wanted to go to law school. Me too. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's I don't know, great. but things change in college and then you're yeah. like, well, the LSATs are actually really hard. Yes. Like the LSATs was really what stopped me from going to law school. I was like, this is just too much. That and then I, you know, I spoke with other people who have been in the industry and they just kind of discouraged me a bit that, really? you know, yeah, I got so many conflicting reviews. And so I thought, you know what, let me at least do the MBA. And mm -hmm. then from there, I can kind of decide, OK, do I want to go ahead and do my, you know, yeah. PhD or then I'll have more of a base. and once i was done that i actually did consider going to do the phd but then i just stopped at that would you ever go back to law school at this point at this age <laughs> no no but um there's no regrets there you know yeah. when you're in university and you think about it when you're doing all these degrees who are you really doing it for is it really what you want to exactly. do it's like what you know you're supposed exactly. to do exactly and I think a big part of me doing those degrees was just because, okay, this is a step and yeah. I've become a lot more non-traditional since then. So <laughs> I love that. I feel like our generation like was like the generation where you had to go to college. Like it was always like, go to college, go to college, go yes. to college. Um, and then we did that. But then like, even with my political science degree, I'm like, what do I do with it now? Correct. So I feel like, you know, having our own businesses, like what we're doing right now is what's giving us unlimited income and opportunities Correct. and it's probably the best thing i've ever done in my life but oh, sometimes awesome. i still want to go to law school like like at two in the morning i'm like maybe i could go to like harvard online like kim kardashian did it i could always do that and then the LSAT comes back to me and i'm like never mind yeah i know it scarred you right it scarred you um you know there's still a piece of me that likes the research that likes uh 
a part of me that I guess plays out in my business, but yeah. you know, it's such a competitive industry. I don't know. I think I'm fine where I'm at. I um, think so too. <laughs> and I think for you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's just, yeah. So I feel like I'm an overachiever and I see that in you as well, but tell yeah. me more about like, what brought you to starting your own concierge business? I know you traveled a lot. You got a lot of inspiration there. You have a huge network of connections. So go right. into that. So going back to the ties with law school, loving to research, I am a stickler for detail. Mm -hmm. I would be the kind of person if we lost our luggage or something happened, then I would be digging in, you know, wow. going from start to finish following up i just really liked the research and i got very creative very excited mm -hmm. um and then after COVID, i kind of you know i dabbled in this a bit before and then after COVID, i was like okay this feels more like what i like aligns with my true nature my part of my personality that comes alive and you know it just wasn't one thing it, it could be many things so that was the launch of dolce vita <laughs> oh, what happened during covid were you working before that and just, yes okay. so i've always been in the financial industry which oh wow yeah which again it was kind of like the degrees right you'd get yep. somehow end up in this position and you'd get stuck there and you think this is what you should continue mm -hmm. with and eventually just clicked to me it was not what was aligning with my true nature and, and who I really was to the core, you know, I would be, to give you an example, there, there's so many facets to my personality that come alive, but it all goes on to being creative. I would be in home goods, which is like my second home. <laughs> yeah, I love home goods. <laughs> I always make the joke that if I should faint, I should pass out and I'm in home goods, I'm fine. <laughs> Everybody knows We know where know. to find you. <laughs> But they also know who I am, so I'm safe. Um, if I were in the store and I would pass uh, just somebody randomly in the aisle and she, was she or he were contemplating, okay, does this color work? I immediately would just get involved and help. And I would just Love volunteer that. an opinion. I would just start a conversation. I would somehow, at the end of that conversation, they would feel so motivated. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, you know, things that I like to get into. I like to be able to fix things, make things better wow. or enhance things. And so that kind of ties into what I do. Wow. So COVID kind of brought you to starting your own concierge business. Why did you choose concierge? Uh, oh, that's such a good question. Um, I like helping people. Yeah. I love helping people. Uh, you know, it's not about the money. It's more so about the reward that I get from seeing somebody satisfied or happy in the end, that really brings me a lot of joy, going back to helping somebody in the aisle of that course, I don't know, yeah. or just so it allowed me to be creative, it allowed me to do my research that I like, yeah. it allowed me to really connect with people and, um, and help. So concierge is a big word. I feel like I just like learned what it was like a few years ago. You know, there's always that concierge desk at the hotel, but I'm like, what exactly is it? So for our listeners out there that don't know, go into a little bit about the services that you offer. I feel like they can kind of ask for anything, right? Yes. And so I'm glad you asked that question because quite often when I say that word, you would think that it's so familiar because you have it all over in the hotels, mm -hmm. but people are truly overwhelmed by the word. And yeah. so, yeah, and I get it to, you know, ask that question quite a bit. So for me dolce vita means sweet life or la dolce vita means sweet life and a concierge our concierge service is one that uh, it's a tailored service to families business owners so it's a tailored service that brings curated experience to life so i would say to give an example or to elaborate more on that um some of the services we would say, let's say we can walk the dog in the day, charter yacht in the evening. Okay. Wow. So we do with services from curated travel package, um, chartering a boat, hiring a chef, transportation, private aviation. Wow. There's not really much I say no to mm -hmm. uh, for my clients. Have and you ever had to say no? No, so far, no. To the positive side, what about like something where you were like, this is like a dream and you just had so much fun doing it? So I would say, uh, I regard myself as the luxury matchmaker. Mm -hmm. If I had to think of like a quick, so I align for my clients, uh, a luxurious lifestyle, whatever that means for them. Yeah. So I create extraordinary experiences based on their desires. Mm -hmm. One of the most memorable experience, I had a young group just recently that went to Italy 
um, very affluent group. They were such nice people to work with. They were super humble. Um, they weren't demanding. They had a healthy budget to work wow. with. So I became really creative and I just, you know, I'm passionate in general, but it was really a pleasure working with them. So I went really, you know, above, above and beyond yeah. making sure they had a superb experience. And in the end, uh, they texted me at the end of a trip to say, we could not have done this without you. And I, I, that message was a little bit more detailed, but it moved me to yeah. tears. Okay. It meant more than, you know, the charge, the cost for the services yeah. that, you know, it was just the fact that they were so satisfied. They enjoyed every moment of it. And I felt like I was on vacation with them too. Oh, I love that. What did they do? What are some activities that they did? Um, so they went to Italy and that was their first time, which is another surprising thing. A lot mm -hmm. of people that, you know, have the luxurious lifestyle don't necessarily travel that much, right? Yeah. Because when you think of luxury, it's not just about having money. For some people, luxury is time. Yeah. They make all this money, but they don't have the time to spend it. And so this is where Dolce Vita comes in play, where we help to create that time. You don't have to worry about making the plan. The plan right. And then we create all that for you. So you just are able to show up, have fun, <laughs> live the experience, the Dolce Vita. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And just carry on with it. So, um, yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. So doing concierge, like tell me how you add your personal touch and what sets you apart from other concierge. Wow, so that's a very loaded question. I think um, a few things. I'm curious. I pay attention to a lot, a lot of detail, things that people probably would not see. For example, I know that you went to Aspen for the yes. holidays and I knew like I just pay attention to the details, mm -hmm. what people like. I remember things and I think that sets me apart um, from others. I'm also a stickler for following up. I don't take no yep. for an answer. So, you know, at all times I represent my clients and I'm always pushing for them. There's no leverage on the other end with oh the vendors God. or anyone. So I, um, yeah, I'm a stickler for crossing T and wow. I, I have to say a bit of a perfectionist and that comes in very handy for this I line think of that's work. that's super important. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So um tell me about what are your future plans so for dolce vita i think the next level would be to start a membership Ooh, yeah sign me up i know right <laughs> yeah you'd be a great a great client start a membership uh for those that want long-term um services because mm -hmm. not everybody not all my clients are year round. Some of them are seasonal. Some of them are just for travel. Yeah. Some of them just um, want to rent a charter a boat or charter a private plane. So the idea is to create a membership for those that want more of a long term service. I love that. And is your specialty like Miami or are you like worldwide? It's actually international. Yes. I, love it. I mean, yeah. you did Italy. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, so as a woman that owns a business, do you have any advice um, on like how to like overcome any like judgment or like being misrepresented? Oh, that's okay. I think that it's very important to stay authentic to yourself. And you know, for me, I, I don't consider myself a feminist, but I definitely love the idea of empowering women. Mm -hmm. I am from a culture that, um, sorry, Jamaica, <laughs> but we were, we were, you know, kind of raised to stand behind a man or support. Yeah you know, be the wife at home. And I have to say from a very young age, I knew that was not going to be me. Wow. Yeah. I still to this day, I define myself as Shauna. I wake up as Shauna. I'm Shauna. I happen to be a woman. I happen to be Jamaican. I happen to be all these other things, but I identify myself as Shauna. Wow. I don't want to be identified as somebody's wife. I don't want to be somebody's shadow. Yeah. So I think it's just very important to, you know, follow what you believe in, mm -hmm. you know, and not to knock anyone that wants to stay at home and, and, you know, be in the shadows of a man. There's to each his own, no judgment there, yeah. but I think it's, it's important. And I come from a family on both sides that the women are super strong. Wow. Standalone. Yes. Yeah, super Wait, strong. Really? <laughs> Tell me about your mom. <laughs> uh, she's tough. She's tough. Um, my mom, my grandmother. I mean, when I think about all the women, you actually forget about the men. Wow. <laughs> Wait, that's actually amazing. Yeah. 
because they are they they're not defined by anything else but themselves they create their own journey they create their own image um and that was the environment i was raised in i love that i feel like i was too like when i was being raised like my gender was never a factor within my family like my dad was teaching me how to like fix a car and change tires and like build tables and stuff and Like my gender never had anything to do with anything. It wasn't until I got thrown into like the real world as a woman in business where I realized like men are more powerful and sometimes I have to have a man ask questions for me so that I get taken seriously. And I think now I'm not at that point anymore, but thanks to my family support, like I knew I could and then I did. And so I think we have so much in common, right? (laughs) The law school, political science, like. You know, that is, it's such a shame that we actually have to go through those experiences. And I Mm -hmm. think, you know, based on how I was raised in that environment, that prepared me for the the outside world, you know, because I remember when I first moved here, um, I grew up, my dad was into um, drag racing, a little side note. And I I grew up in that industry. So I had a little bit of knowledge on cars Mm -hmm. and, um, Fun fact, I also drag raced for a little Wait, bit myself. Real? Yes, oh it my did. It does not, people are so surprised. <laughs> surprised at that. So when I would go to like, let's say a mechanic here to have the car service, they would just kind of quickly, you know, they wouldn't take me seriously. They would even quote me a price that wasn't correct, wasn't oh, wow. accurate, or tell me something that just didn't make sense. And I would always have to push back. So yeah, it's tough. You know, oh they, they assess you sometimes and you just go with that. Yeah. And you just have to keep pushing through. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So before we go into our this or that section, I want to ask who is like your dream client and what would you do for them? Oh, wow. Um, so again, service is my number one thing. You know, I that's a point of having me, right? So I want to give them the ultimate elevated service, always leaving with a curated extraordinary experience. That is always my goal. My ideal client would be, you know, and I, I want to, it could be families, it could be um, CEOs, executives, uh, PAs, they may need some of my services. Mm-hmm. Um, PAs like personal assistants. Yeah, personal yeah. assistants, they may need my services because they may not, for example, if they're booking a trip for a curated trip for their boss, they may not know parts of Italy. Wow. Um, single woman, anyone can really be a client, anyone that's in need of a service, Mm -hmm. because I don't want to leave anyone out saying it's only an affluent crowd. Right. Naturally, those are the people that would want or need these kind of services, but no one's left out is I treat someone that just does a fridge stock the same as I do with someone that's traveling. And you just led me to another question. So I feel like people are very intimidated with the word concierge because it sounds expensive. (laughs) It's like a rich people thing. So what are some like things that like would fit in somebody's budget where they can have that luxury experience, but stay budget friendly? Like, would they tell you their budget or? Sure. I've had, and again, people that have a lot of money come with budgets, you know, and they're, they're sometimes really strict on the budget compared to those that don't. Really? So yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised, but it's a tailored service. Mm-hmm. If you tell me what you have, I'll work. I'll work with you. Really, it's a tailored service. It's tailored to your needs, your desire. I'm gonna make it possible within those means, obviously, mm-hmm. and what I can do. Yeah, but absolutely. Wow, I feel like you know it's 2024. Everyone's prioritizing peace of mind and self care. So I think that it's something that people should invest in. You know, because you're gonna save so much time. You know, like it might be expensive or like, you know, something that's a luxury, but it's worth it because you're gonna have that peace and everything is just done for you. (laughs) Correct, right? I strongly believe in like outsourcing for sure. Cause when I try to do everything myself, I just end up being counterproductive because I'm so stressed. Think about when you're planning vacation, let's say going somewhere here in Florida is no big deal, right? But think about if you're going to Europe Mm -hmm. and you've never been, there's a lot of things that people may not know. There's a language barrier, there's a time difference, there are city taxes, there's all these things and it can can be super overwhelming yeah and so the idea of taking that out yeah. of the idea of going on vacation yeah. i mean you want to yeah. go on vacation stress-free <laughs> okay i'm gonna ask you a really hard question because people ask me all the time okay where's your favorite place in the world one city or country oh, i can't answer it it's so hard for me that is hard you know i'm a big foodie uh-huh Ooh, where's I, the best food oh gosh um i love the food in italy Oh yeah. I know. And, and <laughs> yeah, I, so my favorite, I love 
I love Asian cuisine. So that's mm -hmm. my favorite. I, I believe it or not, I grew up on a lot of that because yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Have you been to Jamaica, by the way? I have, but a resort, so not real Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Please call me when you're going the next time. I will. Yeah, but our culture is very diverse. So we have a lot of... Um, I know they have a lot of curry, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Indians, a lot of Chinese. It's a melting pot, really. Mm -hmm. Our motto is out of many one people. So I was exposed to the different cuisines from then on. And I think that's where my love... Asian food started mm -hmm. um but I love Italian food if there's one thing in my house it's always really? pasta oh my gosh so always. your favorite city in Italy where would that be if you could just hop on a plane right um now? oh gosh this is so cliche but I love Capri I, and I know I'm Capri butchering too. the word because Italians are gonna be like that's not how you say it but really wait how do you say it, it I think it's Capri oh Capri I say Capri but I say Capri <laughs> I named it Capri Capri. In my collection after Capri because I'm like this is such a Capri color and I love Capri, the whole, that's in the Amalfi Coast, yes, right? Like Positano, yes. all yeah. of that. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. The the weather, the, the people dress up a little bit more. You think when you go to Milan, everybody's going to be dressed to the nines. I find that in Capri, yeah. I guess it's like a little bit of Palm Beach. And yeah, I see that. A little bit of Italy. Yeah. And the food in Italy is just, and I'm not talking about like necessarily Michelin star restaurants or anything. I'm talking that you just go into a small town and there's a little restaurant on the corner and you have the best, best food ever. Everything mm -hmm. tastes so, you know, yeah, like a like tomato real. tastes like a tomato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause it's not like filled with GMOs. Right. <laughs> That's another topic. Right. I love Capri though. Like boat rides, everything you see is so pretty, right? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. All right. So I know we're almost out of time. So okay. we're going to go into this or that. Let me pull up my notes here. Okay. And you can like elaborate a little bit. So okay. to like why, if you want to, or you can okay. just leave it one word. Um, so would you rather read a physical book or a Kindle? Oh my gosh, you're asking some really tough questions. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so here's my thing, and I'm going to elaborate on this yeah, one. Yeah, of course. Um, I actually got into audiobooks. Oh. Yeah, and I actually like them because the few times I run, yeah. <laughs> I listen to them. But I can multitask. I can be doing something else in the mm -hmm. house, and then I can listen to the book. But if it's a really good book, I then buy the book. Yeah, I have to. I have to. I have some kind of attachment with a book, so I do like both. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think about audio books. I'm like, yeah. Kindle or physical books? I'm going to change that question later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an early riser or a night owl? I'm a night owl. I can stay okay. up until late, but I do get up early. I have um, I have a few cats that I'm feeding. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, Are I'm a like big... pets or. So I'm a big, big animal lover. I know this Aww. is another fun fact about me and I feed quite a bit. So it started out with, I just had one or two strays and then one had a litter and um, oh, she had kittens so cute. and I had no idea what I was in for because I didn't, I wasn't allowed to have cats when I was growing up. My mother had this thing about cats. Okay. So my, my experience is pretty new and those kittens they were so cute, so adorable. I fell in love with them. And then, you know, once you start feeding one, then others come. Oh, <laughs> now you're stuck. <laughs> and before you know it, I was feeding nine. Oh and my so, yeah, but I, I, I love that. Oh my gosh. I love animals. Oh my gosh. Um, beach or mountains? Oh, I mean, I am a bit of everything. Eh? I We go to the beach probably every weekend. Mm -hmm. I live in Florida and I live pretty close to the beach. So we go all the time, which I enjoy. And um, I like the mountain. I like the mountains as well. You know, it's interesting because I'm an island girl. I grew up in the islands. Yeah. We did not go to the beach that much. Yeah. <laughs> but here in the U.S., I go to the beach all the time. That's crazy. Yeah. I live like I've been here for ten years. I think I've been to the beach like four times. Oh, no. And it's like right there. But I'll oh, go no. for like photo shoots and stuff. But like I'm not like let's have a beach day because it's just so much work. <laughs> it is, but it's so nice. Sometimes it we go there for dinner. It's so oh, nice when the sun yeah. is down. I mean, yeah. oh, really nice. Yeah, that is so nice. Um, Zoom meeting or in-person meeting? <laughs> You're asking some good <laughs> ones, huh? Um, okay. I guess in person, you know, it's always warmer. It's nice to connect. Yeah. You you see body language. You read things about people that you're not able to necessarily see on a and Zoom. And you know that the connection is secure, right? It's not right. like, can you hear me now? Right, right. <laughs> So you're not yeah. accidentally muted. <laughs> right. I'm an in-person meeting too, but it depends on like where I am. And, like, yes. What it is. Right. Yeah. Um, what is your dream car? Uh, please don't judge me, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I like big cars. Um, 
I, I got this question recently. So two things I would want. I am a little obsessed with the, it's so cliche again, but not for the same reason as everyone mm -hmm. else. I, I love the G-Wagon and, mm -hmm. and I'll say why. When I was a kid, I remember that box shaped Land Rover. Yeah. That was like very boring. I was obsessed with it as a kid. Oh my God. So the G-Wagon has a little bit of play on that for me and I like that. And then my dream is also to have a Camaro because my dad used to have uh -huh. a Camaro that oh he raced gosh. when yeah. he was young and I just wanted one. What color? Ooh, he had a red one. That's so cute. Yeah. I think I would go with something and probably, you know, with the little stripes in the middle on the yeah. top, you know, maybe like a black one with like the red racing yeah. stripes or something. <laughs> That's cool. And yeah. then you have like, you know, the little car that goes fast and then like the big car. Yeah. Yeah. Love the that. Rory. Um, massage or facial? Oh my gosh. I know. Um, <laughs> both, both, <right? laughs> uh, both. I actually, I love to get massages and I actually do because I have like little issues here and there with my back, uh, herniated disc. So I get them all the time, oh, wow. especially foot massages. I get those all the time, but listen, a facial trying to preserve, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hold on to this. Well, you look amazing. I don't know how old you are, but you look And I'll stunning. never say. She's like a supermodel <laughs> over here. <laughs> Yeah, those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Wait, did you model? Yeah, when I, I was... I knew it. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, I, when I was um probably 13 all the way until, like, in my early 20s. And can I tell you, my mom was super strict. Wait, you're not so in your early 20s. I wish. Girl, I wish. you look so good. <laughs> <laughs> Holding on for dear life. Oh, you're doing great. Um, Thank you. No, yeah. So I started, then my mom... It was such a fight. She was like, oh, no, you know, culturally, you know, moms are super strict to the girls. And I was like, modeling at 13, you're going to be an adult before, blah, blah, blah. But I did it. And um, yeah, loved every moment of it. In the end, it's not my world, though. You know, it focuses a lot too much on the appearances shell on the outside. And so I didn't, I didn't want to continue with that. Wow. But it's good to have that experience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, Instagram or TikTok? zero <laughs> wait what i know so <laughs> Hold on. sorry people on <laughs> i am not i am such a private person wow yeah this tiktok tiktok forget it i haven't even explored that yet okay um instagram now you're giving away your age you might look no, young but now i'm like how old no, are you no. tiktok <laughs> is there i'm coming to tiktok soon um no i know i have to get on the bandwagon uh so <sighs> Instagram, I guess I've started that. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best at it. I'm getting better. So total transparency. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Hey, Google, stop. Okay. Go back into Instagram. I'm not very good at that. So Instagram, I'm not very good at that. Total transparency. I am working on it. I know this is what people are into, but I'm super private. I just, I'm from a world where I feel like in person is better. Mm -hmm. And also for my clients, a big part of it for them is privacy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've had how people do you market yourself. Like, how do people find out about you? you don't use social media marketing? No, such a good question. Yeah. So I'm going to say something a little obnoxious, people. Don't be mad at me. But you don't see Lamborghini advertising on TV. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a Lamborghini, yeah. but the kind of clients that are going for that, they're not, they're not going to go on Google to search. It's really difficult to grow because you have to network. You have to get wow. in front of these people. It has to be word of mouth. And there is a privacy factor that's very wow. important. Think about it. Uh, Brad Pitt, who's really hot. You don't know who his publicist is, his team. Mm -hmm. They're not visible to everyone. Yep. And again, not that I'm on that level, but this is important to them. A lot of the people that I work with, I've been asked to sign NDAs. I mean, wow. people don't want to talk. They don't want to be discussed. They don't yeah. want anybody to know their private business. Some people are very conservative with having a lot of money. They just are not showy. And... For me, that's important. I come from financial background where that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a part of my brand, who I am and, and being super private. And I'm, you know, going to get out there more and be a little bit more accessible to those that are interested in learning yeah. about it. But wow, I'm like mind blown right now. So how did you get your break? Like, how did you break into the industry? Wow, it was through uh, connections that I had um, already existing. I got referrals here and there, and I'm still breaking in. I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. still meeting the right people, yeah. um, but they're not on 
they're not on the social media platform. I feel like maybe more LinkedIn or more in person. Wow. They, people can get really intimidated by that, you know, wow. if they're thinking, okay, am I going to go this way? It's not like I'm selling a product, you know, yeah. it's a service oriented wow. and so with that comes trust. And you have all the details of their lives. You know exactly where they're going to be. Correct. Imagine if it's like Kim Kardashian. You could be like, oh, Kim's going to be in Italy on this. Yeah, right. you know, like you can't tell people that. So Correct. Privacy, I guess, is very, very, important. very, very important. So that's why you have to go to these events and put yourself yes. out there. And I guess that's how yes. we met. Yes. So, wow. Absolutely. Like, wow, that's really, really interesting. I never yeah. would have thought but. We're going to help you with social media for sure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'll thank be tagging you. you. Follow me. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, last question. Road trip or fly? Oh, I could do both. I could do both. Actually, when we go to Italy, um, there's always like an adventure part to it. So we fly into Italy, but there's always lots of road mm -hmm. trips here and there, driving, exploring, being one with the people, just getting really into the neighborhood because otherwise you're going to a resort. Yeah. You're staying there. You're not experiencing the culture. It's like me in Jamaica, you're like, have you been? I'm right. like, well, I saw the Hyatt. You know, right. that's it. Right. <laughs> Even when I go back, believe it or not, um, I actually visit Jamaica like a tourist. Not sorry, oh, I shouldn't yeah. say that. Not like a tourist, but like a tourist that would want to like connect with the locals. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing things that I probably didn't grow up doing. I'm not staying at a big resort. I'm staying at a villa. I'm doing things in the neighborhood. I wanted to see it from a different angle. I love that. Yeah. 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 It's 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 you know. It's the best thing you could do when you travel is experience the different cultures. It's so humbling. It's so, you know, you learn so much. Yeah. You grow. Love that. So to wrap it up, now we're going to go back to the social media. Tell us where we can find you, where we can book you and follow you and support you and follow your journey. So livedolcevita.com is a website. I think it's pretty easy mm -hmm. to remember. And Dolce Vita Concierge is the Instagram page on TikTok. I'm coming soon. Okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Shana. You thank are you.